Today, I want to tell you about a very special occasion in Israel's history, a day when Solomon dedicated the temple. And in his prayer, he talks about going from defeat to victory. I want to read to you from 1 Kings chapter 8, verses 33 and 34, where we read this. When your people are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you, and when they turn back to you and confess your name and pray and make supplication to you in this temple, then hear in heaven and forgive the sin of your people Israel and bring them back to the land which you gave to their fathers. At the grand opening of the temple, Solomon did everything possible to tell God, to tell Israel, and to tell the world that this was a special house for the great God. Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 6 says that they sacrificed so many sheep and oxen that they lost count. It also describes the spectacular music and the heartfelt worship offered to God on that day. God's glory filled the temple so completely that the priests couldn't even serve there any longer. Now, Solomon was wise enough to know that as great as the dedication day was, it wouldn't be like that forever. Hearts on fire would grow cold, and Israel would turn its heart away from God. In his great prayer, Solomon thought ahead to the future when the temple might not be a place of celebration, but a place of repentant confession and returning to God. Solomon asked God to listen to the prayers of his defeated people when they came to the temple to pray. So Solomon expected that defeat would someday come. He said, when your people Israel are defeated. He didn't say with, he, if, he said when. Now, we are always vulnerable to defeat until these bodies are resurrected and our salvation is complete. When we find ourselves in that place, we shouldn't be surprised. Some defeat is common to most Christian lives. The question is this, what are you going to do about that defeat? Don't feel condemned about being a defeated Christian. Convicted, yes. Condemned, no. You see, Solomon knew where this defeat came from. It came because they have sinned against you, Solomon said in his prayer. Nothing can change in our Christian life until we realize that defeat comes from us. Your trials or circumstances did not cause your defeat. Other Christians have gone through far worse trials and emerged victorious. The problem, if I could say it frankly, is you. Now, God may allow defeat as a gift to wake us up to this fact. Solomon knew how to turn defeat into victory. You must turn back to God. He used the phrase here, turn back to you, speaking to the Lord. And you must realize that in some way you have turned away from him and that there's nothing more important than turning back to him. So first, turn back to God. Then secondly, agree with God about who he is and what he thinks about your life. That's in the phrase Solomon used, confess your name. That means to change your thinking about whatever led you into defeat. Whether it was neglect of prayer, self-confidence, maybe you weren't taking sin seriously, learn God's mind on those things and confess the great name of God and that he is right in all that he does and thinks. Finally, you must seek God passionately. Solomon used the phrase here, pray and make supplication to God. God will reward the seeking heart. So spend some extra time, perhaps extraordinary time, in prayer and seeking God. Friend, you held the cause of your defeat, but God holds the key to your victory. So seek God today and do it in turning back to the Lord, confessing his name, and seeking God passionately in the person and work of Jesus Christ, especially what he did at the cross in the empty tomb. Seek him today.